Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Diamond. The other day I was on one of the wine forums that I kind of lurk through from time to time to see if anyone was mentioning uh, a wine that they thought was good. And someone mentioned the Juggernaut Cabernet and then a whole bunch of people dogpiled onto that. So I was thinking maybe I should just pick up a bottle of it and see how it goes. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, uh, before I begin today's video, if you like it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, click that notifications bell, um, share it with a friend, share it with an extended family member who you really want to get in touch with. It's just been a long time, and sometimes they might need a good wine recommendation. Maybe that's what breaks down what made you drive each other apart so long ago. Could be. Or it could just be that you want to send them a wine video. So today I'm going to be reviewing the 2017, oh sorry, 2018 Juggernaut Hillside Cabernet. It is 14.5% alcohol by volume and I paid splurge alert $23 for it. That's right. A whole seven, eight dollars over what I typically recommend. Yep, I did have to sell blood for this one so I might get lightheaded in the review. Let's take a look at it from a color standpoint. All right, so from a color standpoint, oh, oh, you are deep purple, no artifacts, no cloudiness. Yeah, and this is gonna be another one of those where like I'm looking at it and I can see blue around the lip. I took a picture, it looks red. I have no clue how to get this on camera accurately, um, but I can just tell you what I see and post a video of what my camera on my phone decides to show you. Uh, anyway, so let's get to the nose. From a nose standpoint, medium plus intensity on the nose, Smells clean condition. Man, this is, this smells like it's gonna be a heavy wine, but it doesn't necessarily smell like it's going to be jammy. It has a lot of black fruit. You get this plum, you get black cherry, a little bit of blackberry, maybe some black currant in there. Uh, on the secondary, you're getting like a touch of mocha, uh, a little bit of baking spices, more like clove. Maybe you're getting a little bit of cinnamon in there. A noticeable amount of alcohol in the palate is actually kind of burning my nasal cavity a little bit. Ooh, not really any tertiary. Yeah, there's like a tiny bit of earth developing, but just uh, not not very much. It's almost, and even then, earth is not right. It's like dried oak leaves. And I, and I know that right now because my entire backyard is full of dried oak leaves because the weather in Texas is so schizophrenic that I either grow leaves or I drop them and it all happens within a week and it's just the way it's gonna be. All right, so, but how does this thing taste? Medium plus acid, medium plus tannins. If you've ever picked up asphalt and put it in your mouth and moved it around a little bit and then you spit it out, it's sort of what reminds me of what remains from the asphalt. This is like the slight tar effect. You kind of get this grittiness. Asphalt doesn't suck your mouth dry like the tannins does, but that's how I would kind of describe the tannins. The tannins are kind of asphalty. Uh, however, though, I really am very happy with this wine. So in terms of intensity, medium plus intensity on the palate as well, it has this really nice kind of bold fruit note, whereas a lot of Cabernets that I've had, especially from California, um, most notably, the biggest abusers of this for the price range are Napa, where it's just very like vanilla or overcompensated with oak. This you're not really getting any of that. It has this really nice balance between the secondary. Those baking spices are there. Uh, that little bit of like dried leaf is there, but nothing is out of whack. And the acid really carries all the flavors. The fruit really hits you on the approach, and then it carries through on the mid palate. The, the secondary pops up in the mid palate, so do those dried leaves, and both those carry through into the finish as well. So overall, this isn't bad. Finish is medium plus finish. It, it's, it's nice because I, when I didn't see that there was a specific appellation on the swine or AVA in the US, I, I, I thought it, it could be something where it was just kind of thrown together and no one didn't care about it, but that doesn't feel like it's the case with this wine. Let me get to the Blick and really see how it scores. So in terms of balance, you're in balance. I think this is a pretty well done wine. So good job, full point. Length, medium plus finish. If you would have held on for like 10 more seconds, you'd get a full point here, but I'm gonna give you half a point. Intensity, medium plus on both. 
If one of those was pronounced, I would have given you a point. Oh, half a point here. And in terms of complexity, I am getting primary and secondary. That tertiary is barely there. Not enough to where I'd really give you a point on it, but you still get half a point. So in the end, that comes out to two and a half points. I'm going to give you good. And the reason why is if this was a $15 bottle of wine, I would be giving you a very good because there's aging potential. There's a nice weight to this wine. Everything really plays well on the palate. I, it, the alcohol doesn't present itself overpoweringly anywhere unless you're really breathing deep on the nose. It's not even really present on the palate as much. So this thing is very well put together, but my problem with it is that it's $23. If it was 15, man, you'd, you'd be up another rating in my scale if that mattered to you. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had the 2018 Juggernaut Hillside Cab? What do you think of it? I'd be interested to know. Leave it in the comments below. And I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. In the meantime, say hi, wife. Hi. Yeah, she's still here. She hasn't left me yet. I'll see you all again soon.